So from these examples on compound interest and all, but now we move on to a concept of nominal versus effective rate of return. This is especially for banks. Suppose they have to they have a nominal rate versus the effective rate of return. So the normal rate of return generally is called the, is the general annual rate of return that is the annual interest rate. So it's five percent per annum. Suppose interest is calculated or at the rate of five percent per annum, and it is compounded also per annum. So in such case, five percent is called the annual rate of interest is called the nominal rate, and in such case, that itself will be the effective rate. But as we have done earlier. when the same rate of interest is taken into account but compounded more frequently say once in 4 3 months or once in 6 months or once every month then the net return is bound to be different then for the entire year what is the overall amount of interest and hence what is the effective rate of interest so suppose in this case suppose annual interest rate was 5% per annum compounded annually the same thing is 5% per annum compounded say half yearly in this case this will have the factor 1 plus 0.025 raised to 2 for every year this would be the factor And this would be one plus zero point zero five raised to one for one year, which is not exactly the same. So this would give you this, for example, one point zero two five into. So this would be one point zero five zero six two five, whereas this is just one point zero five. So effectively, a factor point zero 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 six two five is added over here, and hence there is an effective rate of return is going to be quite different from nominal rate of return. And this will be, and if you increase the number of times it's compounded from this, you make it quarterly, you will find that the rate of interest would change even compared to this. So this is what is going to be covered in this particular. topic that is nominal rate versus effective rate of return as said if the compounding is done annually the nominal rate and effective rate are going to be one and the same but if the compounding takes place half yearly quarterly monthly fortnightly daily basis the effective rate of return accordingly changes as compared to the nominal rate of return so we do have standard formula to find for example you have a case <coughs> which is a better investment interest at 18.5 per annum so we can take some so 18.5 per annum suppose amount is say 1000 rupees and it is 18.5 means 1 plus 0.185 for the first year it could be this so it's going to be so it's going to be 1185 and uh, Compound interest would be one hundred and eighty-five. Obviously, suppose it is eighteen percent per annum, compounded half yearly. In that case, it's going to be thousand into it's eighteen percent per annum, so it's half yearly zero point zero nine raised to two minus one. Of course, this would give you. So you get around one thousand eight hundred one eight 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 one eighty eight point one zero. Whereas this will be one eighty five. So you find although the rate of interest is much less, you will find that the net interest that a person gets is more here as compared to this. So hence the effective rate of Interest changes accordingly. The same thing if we take it as eighteen percent per annum, 
and 18% per annum compounded half yearly, the difference would be more clearly visible. So this is giving you the nominal rate. This will be net effective rate of interest. So if you look at, so the net effective rate is going to be much different from this. Okay, so net effective rate will be actually in this case will be 18.81% because 188.10 upon 1000 into 100 will give you 18.81%. Okay, so the general formula for effective rate of return is 1 plus R by N raised to N minus 1 into 100 which you will get it as percent. So, effective rate of return as said is interest compounded more than once a year converted to annual rate. Whatever is the overall, like in the previous case, the net effective net uh, interest was 188.1 for every 1000. So, upon 1000 into 100, so the net effective rate was 18.81%, whereas the nominal rate was only 18.5%, which is different. So it's eventually 1 plus R by N raised to N minus 1 into 100, where R is the annual rate of interest upon the number of times it is compounded raised to the number of times it is compounded in a year minus 1. All these are assuming that we take it for one particular year.